All right, folks. So we talked about carbohydrate metabolism, protein metabolism, and lipid metabolism. I think not in that order, but anyway, we talked about all three of those, the metabolic pathways for all three of those. Now what we're going to do is look at the control, the overall tissue and organ control of these pathways based on where you are in your daily uh eating routine you know you eat three meals a day usually or maybe if you guys don't eat breakfast you eat two meals a day but let's say you eat three square a day well when when do you do all of these things like when do you break down the glucose and make atp when do you take the glucose and make glycogen etc cetera, etc cetera. so let's look at this the overall well first of all when you eat and let's say you eat breakfast at 8 a.m you eat lunch at noon and you eat dinner at uh five okay when you eat you are in the absorptive state that makes sense you just ate you're absorbing all those nutrients well when you eat levels of glucose goes up levels of lipids go up and levels of amino acids go up so this is when you have high levels of all of these and it's called the absorptive state and we'll look at the hormone changes during the absorptive state and then as you go throughout your day and you do activity, levels of all of these decline. You burn the glucose, you burn the lipids, you utilize the amino acids. You actually might burn them for energy, but you also might build, build some collagen or build some muscle or something like that. But you utilize all of these and they start to decline. And when they're declining in the decline, it's the post-absorptive state. Now, hopefully, this post-absorptive state doesn't last very long. So you can see right here, I'm at, a, I'm at an all-time low right here in my post-absorptive state. No problem. I eat lunch, and everything goes back up again. And then they decline, and then I get hit a low again. But no problem. I eat dinner, and they go up again. And then in the middle of the night for a long time, I'm in a post-absorptive state for quite a long time until I break my fast, breakfast. But this is usually sleep when you're sleeping and you're, you're, you have a basal metabolic rate. You know, you're not out splitting wood. You're not out shoveling your driveway. You're sleeping and all you have to do is maintain your basal metabolic rate. All right. So you have the absorptive and the post-absorptive state. This is the absorptive state. How do I know? Blood glucose levels have increased. Blood lipid levels have increased. Blood amino acid levels have increased. That's how I know I'm in the absorptive state. I'm looking at those three things. Let's look at the glucose first. Well, when I have high glucose, insulin is secreted. So what does that mean? Well, insulin binds its receptor and opens glucose channels and glucose enters the cell. Well, what happens to that glucose when it enters the cell? If your cell needs ATP, this glucose will be sent down through glycolysis and the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, and you'll make a ton of ATP. Now, you already know some of the feedback mechanisms for this. ATP itself and citrate from the citric acid cycle, they are going to feed back and turn off these pathways. All right, I'm still absorbing glucose. Then what happens? Now follow the blue arrows. Glucose can be converted to glycogen. My excess pyruvate can be converted to amino acids. Remember, glutamic pyruvic transaminase. I can take the amino group from glutamate and stick it on pyruvate and make an amino acid. All right, so pyruvate can be converted to amino acids and they can be used to make proteins i've absorbed a bunch of lipids because i just ate what happens to these lipids well i can burn them i could burn them but right now i'm talking about the story of i have plenty of atp what happens is i make triglycerides and i store them now notice something insulin stimulates the enzymes of lipogenesis by the way making these lipids is called lipogenesis Insulin stimulates lipogenesis. The green, look down here, green arrow means stimulate. Insulin stimulates lipogenesis. Insulin stimulates protein synthesis, right here. Insulin stimulates protein synthesis. And in addition, look here, testosterone, which are androgens, 
stimulate protein synthesis. Estrogen stimulates protein synthesis. Growth hormone stimulates protein synthesis. So in this absorptive state, these hormones will uh, stimulate these pathways that you're looking at, whether they're catabolic or anabolic pathways. All right, what about the post-absorptive state? Well, in the post-absorptive state, glucose has dropped to an all-time low in my bloodstream. Well, I don't know if it's an all-time low. Realize it probably is not an all-time low. But glucose, glucose and amino acids and lipids have dropped. So what happens? Well, what happens is I have my post-absorptive hormones. I have glucagon and epinephrine. And what they do is they tell my cells to do glycogenolysis. Glycogen lysis, glycogenolysis. So my cells are doing glycogenolysis and breaking down glycogen into glucose. Now this glucose can be released to the bloodstream and bring my blood glucose level back to normal. Or I could burn it and make ATP if my cell needs ATP. But let's say my cell actually has plenty of ATP. Because it always will make the ATP if it needs it. But let's say it has plenty. But I need glucose. Why well, break down the glycogen? Oh, I need some more glucose. No problem. I can take pyruvate and I can run through gluconeogenesis right here, gluconeogenesis, and make more glucose. I can take the glycerol from triglycerides and run it into the gluconeogenic pathway. All right, so I can do that. I can break down my lipids into fatty acids and glycerol to provide more glycerol, and I can provide more fatty acids for, for uh, energy sources if I want. I can break down my proteins into amino acids. Well, what do the amino acids do? Well, the amino, some of the amino acids, not all of them, some of the amino acids can be converted to pyruvate, and pyruvate can go through gluconeogenesis. So I can break down these proteins. So I can do all of these things. Now let's look at the hormones. The big thing I want you to realize here is that growth hormone and cortisol are glucose sparing. So glucocorticoid, the major one is cortisol. We say that these are glucose sparing. Meaning they turn on a bunch of pathways that doesn't cause you to burn glucose. Glucagon and epinephrine uh, cause you to break down glycogen and then typically burn glucose. You can see that glucagon can turn on gluconeogenesis as well. But glucagon and epinephrine will lower blood sugar because not only are they causing glycogen to be broken down, but they're also causing glucose to be broken down further. But cortisol and growth hormone are what we say glucose sparing. They don't cause you to burn glucose. They actually cause you to burn fats and proteins. That's what they cause you to burn. And when you're burning your fats and your proteins, you're sparing glucose. All right, so glu uh, cortisol and growth hormone right here, break down proteins. W what happens to the amino acids? Shun them into the different metabolic pathways, like, the, like hit pyruvate, hit acetyl-CoA, and run the Krebs cycle. What am I sparing? I'm sparing my glucose. And, and they even turn on gluconeogenesis to make more glucose. Look at over here, cortisol and growth hormone turn on a lipolysis and that you make glycerol and fatty acids. Now I can burn these fatty acids for energy. The glycerol can enter glycolysis or gluconeogenesis and I'm sparing my glucose. So growth hormone and cortisol are glucose sparing. And it says right here, the shift in metabolic activity to lipids and, and proteins preserves blood glucose. Growth hormone and cortisol is glucose sparing. Now, what's the problem with burning other things other than glucose or, or stopping from burning glucose and then predominantly burning your amino acids and your fatty acids? The problem is ketone bodies. Your acetone, your acetoacetate, and your beta-hydroxybutyrate. That's the problem. That can lead to ketoacidosis. You get ketone bodies in your blood. All right, so that's the post-absorptive state. This is showing you, it's the same picture of the absorptive state where insulin rules. 
uh, and the absorptive state, of course, is this area, this area, and this area right after a meal. That's the absorptive state. And insulin rules during that state. This is the post-absorptive state. And you can see in the post-absorptive state that I get glucagon and epinephrine to adjust my blood sugar level. I get cortisol and growth hormone to, uh, to turn on glucose-sparing pathways like lipolysis and um, protein degradation. So that's the post-absorptive state. That's the collage showing you them both. And that's it for the absorptive and post-absorptive state.